Hi everyone, welcome back to Chem Help ASAP. In this video, we are going to lay the foundation for thermodynamics. Let's get started. One of the best places to start when talking about thermodynamics is the first law of thermodynamics. And this simply states that energy can be converted from one form to another, but it can be neither created nor destroyed. So basically the amount of energy we have in the universe is constant. Now I'm gonna talk about two main types of energy. There are of course others, but I really wanna focus on these two types. The first I wanna talk about is potential energy. This is the energy of either position or composition. So say for example, you have a hill with a ball sitting on top of the hill. That ball has potential energy based on its position at the top of the hill. Now this potential energy gets converted into another form of energy when the ball rolls down the hill. And that is kinetic energy. This is the energy of motion. Kinetic energy is most often calculated as one half of the mass times the velocity squared. Again, an energy of motion. So if we have the same hill and now the ball is rolling down the hill, it is in motion. It is converting its potential energy into kinetic energy. One type of kinetic energy is actually temperature. So let's get a good definition for temperature. If we think about the particles of a substance, temperature is going to be proportional to the motion of those particles. Now the average kinetic energy of the particles, remember the particles are in motion, is going to be the temperature of the sample. So let's compare a sample with a high temperature to a sample with a low temperature. In the high temperature sample, the particles are moving and they are moving quite fast. In the low temperature sample, the particles are still in motion, but they are not moving as fast. So we have high velocity particles in our high temperature sample and low velocity particles in our low temperature sample. Now what I wanna do is I wanna contrast temperature with heat. Temperature and heat are often used interchangeably in everyday speech, but they are actually not the same thing. So remember, temperature is your average kinetic energy of all the particles in your sample. Heat is actually going to be the transfer of energy or the flow of energy between two or more samples. Now, heat is always gonna flow from the higher energy sample to the lower energy sample. So if we're talking about the temperatures of the sample, heat is the transfer of energy from the high temperature sample to the low temperature sample. Now this happens when they come in contact with each other. So let's take a look at this diagram right here. Our high energy sample is now in contact with our low energy sample and we have a transfer of energy. This is heat. If these two samples stay in contact with each other long enough, they will reach a state called thermal equilibrium. So this happens when there is no more transfer of energy between these two substances. And at this point, the particles in both of these substances have the same energy, they have the same temperature. Key takeaway here is temperature, again, is your average kinetic energy of the particles in your sample. Heat is the transfer of energy from the high energy sample to the low energy sample. And finally, thermal equilibrium is reached when there is no more transfer of energy between the two samples. So still talking about definitions of different properties, I wanna switch gears a little bit and I wanna talk about what it means to be a state function or sometimes called a state property. A state property is any property that is independent of the system's past or future. So often we call this a property that is independent of the path of the system. It doesn't matter how the system arrived at its present state. It only matters that it is at its present state. So let's see some examples of this. So a few examples of state properties are mass, density, pressure, and energy. So let's imagine two children playing with clay. 
one child has a lot of little pieces of clay and another child has say a, a couple of larger pieces but when they put their pieces together they both end up with the same mass it doesn't matter that one child started with smaller pieces and the other child started with larger pieces they both end up with the same mass that is why mass is a state function or a state property is because it doesn't matter how you got to that mass you have the same mass Mass. So let's contrast these state properties with non-state properties. So some examples of non-state properties are work, distance, and heat. So measuring distance is something we're all probably pretty familiar with. Imagine if you have city A and city B. Let's say this blue line represents someone traveling from city A to city B in a straight line. Now let's take a purple line here. This is a different person who takes a different path from city A to city B, but the distance that these two people traveled is very clearly different. The person who took the purple path traveled a longer distance. So when we measure distance, this is a property that is dependent on the path you take. It is dependent on the system's past. Finally, I want to discuss chemical energy. And to do this, we have to define a system and we have to define the surroundings. So the system is simply the part of the universe that we want to study or focus on. So perhaps you're doing a reaction in a beaker. That would be the system. We are focusing on that beaker and that reaction as our system. The surroundings is everything else. It's anything that is not part of the system. So again, if we are studying a reaction in a beaker, our surroundings would be maybe the classroom that you're studying that in. It's basically anything else that is not the system. Now, when we're studying thermodynamics, we're very often studying energy or the transfer of energy. And so it's helpful to have terms to describe how the energy is being transferred between system and surroundings. So if the system is absorbing energy from the surroundings, we call this an endothermic process. This would be like an instant ice pack. So usually in an instant ice pack, you maybe crack it or you break something in the middle of the ice pack and it gets cold. Well, what's happening is the system, the ice pack, is absorbing energy from the surroundings. So if you're holding this in your hand, the ice pack is taking energy from your hand so your hand feels cold. Now, what about the opposite process? Let's say the system is releasing energy into the surroundings. This is an exothermic process. Again, you can see if here is the system, energy is going into the surroundings. This would be a hand warmer, the opposite process of an ice pack. Again, when you open or crack your hand warmer, energy goes from that system, from that hand warmer into the surroundings. Again, if you are holding it in your hand, your hand will feel warmer. As we continue to study thermodynamics and thermodynamic processes, it is important to keep in mind which way the energy is flowing and having terms like endothermic and exothermic are going to be very helpful. I hope that this helped clarify some definitions as we talk about thermodynamics and thanks so much for watching.